that's okay. I'm wearing a hat. That's how you know that I didn't do my <laughs> hat. Yeah, right. Whenever you see me okay. in a hat, it's, it's kind of a clue. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is long awaited. You have been asking me since the beginning to have her, and I wanted to have her. It just sometimes takes a while. She was busy, you know, things like that, but it, she's definitely worth the wait. She has a wonder, worth the wait. That is a Freudian slip. She is worth the wait because she lost 70 pounds doing a McDougal style diet, starch solution diet. She's kept it off. She's absolutely beautiful. She has a wonderful uh, YouTube channel and Instagram page, and she's going to be actually making the kind of recipes that she created to lose these 70 pounds and to keep them off. Please welcome Plantiful Kiki. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. I know you were just like, people are like half Kiki. And of course I want it. I didn't know you at first, but you did a wonderful job in the summit too. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for that interview. People really appreciated that because they could really relate to your story. I really appreciated you reaching out to me. That was really fun. Yeah. So, so this is great. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure because I, I, I found a little older audience than you, not that they're old, but I'm sure there are people that don't know your story. I'm sure they will in a minute and they'll start to follow you, but tell us about your 70 pounds. That's a lot. Yeah. So I struggled with my weight for many years. I kind of teetered. I'm petite. I'm barely five, four. And I kind of teetered between 189 pounds and 194. And I just could not get the weight off. And I tried every diet and I would manage to get five, 10, sometimes even 20 pounds off, but I could never maintain it. And it seems like it always would just come back, of course, faster than I was able to get it off. And then I kind of got to a point where I was having all of these hormonal health issues. I had high triglycerides, high cholesterol. I was pre-diabetic and my doctor called me after some blood work and she was like, okay, like we need to take action. You need to do something about your health. You need to lose at least 40 pounds and you need to start immediately. And when she said 40 pounds, I just couldn't even fathom trying to lose that amount of weight because I struggled so much just to lose five pounds and keep it off. So I luckily had a friend that was like, you need to read this book, the starch solution by this doctor. He helps people heal their bodies and lose weight by eating potatoes. And my first reaction was like, I'm pre-diabetic. Like I cannot be eating carbohydrates, but she was like, just read the book. And I love telling this story because she was really smart. She didn't tell me that it was plant-based. So, so I went and got the book and I read it in one day. I read the whole thing. And at the end of it, I was like, I can't believe I'm considering a plant-based diet, but I just hopped in. I was terrified of eating carbohydrates, but I had nothing to lose. I tried every single diet out there and every exercise program. So I just like jumped in full force and AJ, I cannot tell you the shock week after week to see the scale going down. And I wasn't even eating as clean and healthful as I am now. I like started with like <laughs> cereal, just eating cereal, you know, but I kept the, the fat low and kept the principles as much as I could and weight was coming off. And then of course, as time went on, I adjusted and really tried to apply more of what Dr. McDougal was saying to my diet. And here we are. <laughs> Well, are you still friends with the, 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 the woman that told you about this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she must be really over the moon. Yeah. She's, she's so cute actually. Cause she just had another baby and she called me and she was like, okay, how did you do this? I'm like, girl, you told me how to do it. You told me to get the book. So it was kind of fun to be able to tell her like, okay, just be really good about these few things. And if you're consistent, your body will do the rest. That's it. It made it so simple. But, and Dr. McDougall knows about you, right? Weren't you a success story? Um, I, I was, yeah. I, like, I wrote in and um, I got to be a star McDougaler. So that was, that was fun. That is awesome. And I just, you know, I mentioned before we go on, I just love that all the, the smart, beautiful, pretty YouTubers are doing this weight loss with the start solution and showing yeah. that you don't need to eat a lot of nuts and you can eat a lot of potatoes and look like you. 
yeah, it's, I mean, it's the only thing that I found to be sustainable and actually work. Great. So th- th- what's in front of you looks beautiful. So I have a bunch of just fresh food. I've got stuff to make spring rolls. So when I was first losing weight, I lost the first 30 to 35 pounds pretty quickly, but then my weight loss stalled out. And so then I, I went back to the start solution and reread it again. I've probably read this book like at least 20 times, but I saw where he said, you know, to really clean things up if you needed to continue losing weight and you weren't losing weight anymore. So I was really diligent about getting the processed food out of my diet. So I started eating things in bowls and making things like spring rolls. So I'm going to show you guys, they're super easy. And I, you guys are going to see that I am not like a good spring roll roller. So I think my eight year old does better, but I'm going to do that. And if you're lazy or efficient, like I am, I like to say I'm an efficient cook, not a lazy cook. Then I, a lot of times will just throw everything in a bowl and I've got like these brown rice noodles, or you can throw brown rice in there with all the same fixings and then just put the sauce on top that I'll show you guys how to make. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Did you, yeah. did you, before you became plant-based, were you, did you cook a lot? Um, I only cook cause I have to. And even now I still only cook. I have to, I don't really enjoy it. So I try to make things as simple and as easy as possible. And I've got my family used to eating very simply. So that helps me out. But yeah, I think I cook less, but I have to take the time to prep. Does that make sense? Right. Absolutely. And I really think that's the, one of the biggest secrets to sustainable absolutely. weight loss is, is to simplify. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to prepare because I think it, I heard this saying a long time ago that if you fail to prepare, then you prepare to fail. So that always just stuck with me. And so I'm big on prep. It's so true. Uh, like, preparation trumps motivation. Then if you don't feel like, uh, if, you know, if you, if I think that pre- being prepared is the number one. Yeah. hundred percent. That is absolutely true. So I'll just show you guys. So I, I buy like these rice papers and they do have brown rice papers and I'm trying to be more of an adult and eat brown rice. I don't love it, but I am trying. So I'm going to show you guys like with the brown rice paper. So all you do is have like a dish full of warm water and you just put it in the warm water to kind of soften it up. And when people have told me that they have trouble, like with the papers breaking, then the trick for that is to not let your paper get too soft. So you want to get it out and still let it be a little crispy because it'll still soften up while you're working with it. But see now it's, it's moldable, pliable, whatever you want to call it. So then I like to fill them with some lettuce and I don't know if you can see, well, you can. Okay. And then I've got some shaved or julienne cucumber and carrot and my kids like I will put all of this out on the table and let my kids go at it and they really enjoy making their own rolls and then mom doesn't have to do it so I will roll my own but in my house if you want to eat a roll of any kind a sushi roll or a spring roll you have to make it yourself so I just put on some shredded cabbage and then mango I love mango and then I'll add cilantro really you can put anything you want And then of course I love some microgreens in there too. So really the hardest part is rolling these guys. And so (laughs) I should probably watch some more YouTube videos on this. Do you have any special tools to to make the prep easier? Like to cut the vegetables or the fruit or? Yeah, so I just got um, a julienne peeler on Amazon to julienne the, the cucumber and the carrots. And really that's the fanciest. Everything else, I just use a knife and just slice it up. But you just roll it up like a little burrito. Mm. And there you have it. That looks delicious. And it's so so good. You you really understand understand calorie density because that's- Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Calorie density was, again, understanding that. And I actually learned that a lot from you. I watched- um, after I read the start solution again and read about maximum weight loss, I then bought the book by Dr. McDougall on maximum weight loss and started to kind of get the idea. And then I found you and I read your book and I was like, okay, 
I think I get it. And then I found the lecture that I don't know if you uploaded it, but with Dr. Doug Lyle, it was the conference that you were doing or something. Yeah, um, losing weight without losing your mind. That yeah. one. I, I share that one so much. I, that is so good. And then what's the, uh, Jeff Novick on calorie density, sure. calorie density, those two videos. Oh my goodness. So again, if you don't want to deal with rolling this up, I just make a big bowl. I put all the greens, all the fixings in there. And then again, these little brown rice noodles or just actual brown rice. And then you're set to go. So I'm going to show you guys how to make the sauce real quick. So I have a couple options. This one is a low fat, um, like Thai peanut sauce, but I also, and I think you'll be sharing it, do like a soy ginger sauce, but you, AJ, were super sweet and sent me a ton of these balsamic vinegars from the California Balsamic Company. And this teriyaki one is to die for. I love it. So I'm actually, if you want to do this like super efficient kiki style, like don't even mess with making a sauce, just get some of this teriyaki balsamic. And I just drizzle this on my spring rolls and on my salad now. I love that kiki style. That'll be the new way to eat when you're, no, I'm just going to eat kiki style tonight. Yeah. We call it efficient ladies, not, not lazy, but I am going to show you how to make the low fat Thai peanut sauce. So this is just a couple tablespoons of powdered peanut butter. And I only use that once in a while because it has like 87% less fat than regular peanut butter. So to that, I'll just add a little low sodium soy sauce. And honestly, you can leave out the soy sauce, which I do most of the time because it's too salty for me. And then I add a little water and a little lime juice. And then have you seen these? These are grated gingers. Let's grate a ginger in a squeezy bottle. I love this stuff. That is cool. Yeah. So I'll put a little ginger in there. And then I add chili flakes to everything. I like everything a little spicy, but you of course can leave that out. And that's it. That's like a really quick, easy Thai peanut sauce that's low in fat. And I just drizzle this on top because if you drizzle it, it goes a long way. Whereas if you dip, you know, you tend to like run out and you really don't want to be eating too much, especially if weight loss is your goal. And then you can put this over your salad. But like I said, this teriyaki balsamic that you sent me, it was so good that I won't even mess with this. I'll just put that on everything. Well, Thomas will be happy to hear from that. What I love about you is okay. that you eat a lot of starch, but you also eat a lot of vegetables. I eat a ton of vegetables and understanding, like you talk about all the time, calorie density and understanding how that works, it really is everything. And there's just a few things that you need to understand about low fat and calorie density and go with it. And if you're consistent, I always say, if you're consistent, then time will pay the bill. I love All that. you have to do is be consistent. Absolutely. Where did you get to come up with the name Plantiful Kiki? Uh, you know, I don't know. It could just like, I was like trying to figure out because I wanted to start a channel with my goal of helping a hundred people. And I was trying to think of something I'm like, well, I eat plants and I, I just, I don't know. It just kind of came to me. <laughs> That's very cute. Very cute. Thank you. And you you eat I, I eat vegetables for breakfast and, and yeah. that's not all I eat. People think that, that if you eat vegetables for breakfast, we're just eating like a hundred cow. No, we eat starch too. Okay. But I love that you include vegetables with your breakfast. Yeah, and actually, so I'm from the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and it's really common to be served vegetables with your beans for breakfast. So I was actually used to not having a sweet breakfast, you know. I had a lot of like bread and beans and vegetables growing up. So that wasn't as hard, but yeah, I can't imagine now. I definitely eat way more vegetables now than I've ever at breakfast, but I can't imagine breakfast without vegetables. Exactly. You know, when I, I, there's a spa that I teach at called Rancho La Puerta and that's what, I, and that they serve, veg, they serve tortillas, homemade tortillas, and they have mm -hmm. chuma beans for breakfast. And there was always vegetables for breakfast, but people in the United States think it's weird, but other countries it's pretty normal. 
Oh yeah, it's completely normal. And I've gotten my kids used to eating. I always have like asparagus steamed up or greens steamed up and they grab those in the morning. They'll have like Ezekiel toast with some homemade beans on it. And I think that that's just a wonderful way to start your day. I always say start your day in a savory way because to Americans eat just, they basically eat sugar and flour. They, they eat cake for breakfast. Yeah. Americans. yeah. Oh yeah. It was amazing. Just when I cut out just flour out of my diet, I think I lost like three pounds in two weeks. Just, that was like my first step, you know? <laughs> cool. How long has it been since your, since your 70 pound weight loss? It's been about three and a half years. Yeah. That's good. So you're not, are you, yeah. I, do you ever worry like that you might gain it back some days? No, I, I did in the beginning, but once you really settle into knowing yourself and trusting yourself and your routine, there's just, <laughs> it's just so easy to maintain. I don't worry about it at all. I just eat. I do. I have experimented with adding fats back into my diet several times and my body, my genetics just does not tolerate very much. If any, I can eat like a little, like, and I mean like a quarter of an avocado here and there and a light sprinkle of nuts here and there, but it is a very slippery slope. So <laughs> I have learned that I have to be very careful where I do start to gain weight. And like I said, like nuts, avocado for me, again, I am Latina. So avocado for me is like a love. So that one can be a really slippery slope. Cause I'll just keep adding it and adding it. And, you know, then the weeks turn into months and yeah. Well, well the thing is what, what people don't realize is if you even go to the California avocado commission website, they say a serving of avocado is a fifth. I don't know anybody that eats a fifth oh, of an right. avocado. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, it, it does add up. So, <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that just what Dr. McDougall has been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And there's some people that can eat high fat foods, but they're probably yeah. not people that have, that are, that have ever really been overweight. Right. And my husband lost quite a bit of weight when we switched to a plant-based diet, but he, his body still tolerates way more fat than I can tolerate. He can eat avocado every day. He can have some nut butters and what else does he eat that has whatever. Sometimes he'll eat chips and I'm just like watching this happen. And I'm like, you have no idea how good you have it. Well, it's so unfair because men have testosterone. They can eat a lot more. And when they lose weight, they lose it a lot faster. And it's completely unfair. Yeah. It's totally unfair. So would you mind answering some questions in the chat from the live viewers? Yeah, yeah. Let's do yeah it. The first one is, do you have an official date for when your Plantiful Kids cookbook will be available? Maybe you can talk about any other books you've written. I don't have an official day yet. We're still working on it. We're still working with um, the graphic designer. So it's still in process. We're still looking at late spring. My goal is to get it out to you guys end of May. That's, and that's, I'm really shooting for that. So do, do you have your first book or I, you've written one so far, right? I have, yeah, I have two, actually. I have, um, Plantifully Wholesome. It used to be called Simply Wholesome, but we renamed it to Plantifully Wholesome. And that's more my family style. If you enjoy a little bit more cooking. So there's things in there like lasagna and enchiladas, which are really good. And those are things that I will make like at the holidays, but I do not enjoy cooking. <laughs> so they're not things I make every day, but that's my family style cookbook. And then plan to fully lean is my weight loss guide and cookbook. And in there, I just kind of go over the basics of calorie density and, you know, that 50, 50 plate, making sure you eat your veggies first. And then I share, you know, recipes on how to do that. Do you have any copies you could just hold up? I do. I mean, run in here real quick. Is that okay? okay? I'll, I'll talk to everybody while you're there. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. It's me. Uh, how you doing? Let me tell you who's on the show the rest of the week while I've got your attention. Ooh, uh, we have a double episode tomorrow at two cooking demos. We've got Talia Furman, the daughter of Dr. Joel Furman, who has a new dessert cookbook coming out called Desserts to Live For. And Angie James at the 11 o'clock slot is going to be doing a cooking demo. All right. She's back. I'm back. 
<laughs> they're over there. So this is, I don't have the new one that says plan to fully wholesome. So I'm, right now plan to fully wholesome is only available in ebook, but it's really pretty. I'm hoping to offer it again in print soon, but I'm sure, you know, it's, it's a process and it can be a big, big thing. And this is plan to fully lean which I love this one. So I go over, again, how to arrange your plate, making sure you get, I mean, this is huge for people. Once they understand they can still eat the same volume of food for half the calories when you replace some of it with vegetables is just, I mean, that made all the difference for me. Right. But yeah, so I've got tons of recipes in here and I enjoy it. I pull it out when I need to, find a recipe <laughs> and 50 50 plate it's visual it's not like you're weighing it like right it's it's a visual thing just visual yeah so and, and then people ask all the time like well how do I know how much to eat how much do you eat and I'm like well I have no idea how much I eat some days I eat a lot more than other days so it's really just learning what your body needs to feel full and satiated while still heading in the right direction I mean, you have such a common sense approach to weight loss and I've never seen it now. Oh. People make it so difficult. Yeah. And it really, and you kind of almost have to, when you get started and I had to do this too, is I had to stop fighting the urge to keep complicating it. I just kept complicating it myself. And so you really have to take a step back and eat simple, keep it simple. Don't stress and let your body do the rest. Right. Deborah says she loves you. Uh, JL says a uh, nice thing about Kiki is she feeds her kids this way and she shares what she feeds them too. So many people, you know, eat the way that you eat to lose weight and still feed their family crap, which yeah. I totally understand. Yeah. For me, like after I had read all the information, watched all the documents and the documents, the documentaries, and, you know, listened to the hours of lecture from Dr. Barnard and Dr. Furman and Dr. McDowell, I just could not fathom letting that go into my kids' bodies. I just couldn't. So it was a major, it was a major change. I mean, we were, we were trying to get off of like Cheetos and Taco Bell runs. So there was the transition period, but we made it and my kids are super healthy and love the way they eat. So uh, that's fantastic. Lisa says she loves your videos. Uh, Julie oh, you. loves your recipes. And oh. Uh, yeah, oh, people are asking how your vacation was. It was fantastic. I, we got back late Monday night, so it was really great. I love, I got to see my mom in Florida and then we went down to Tulum and I'm from the Yucatan Peninsula. So it was really nice to be down there amongst the Mayan people and my culture. So it was great. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, oh, uh, Linda wanted to know if you by any chance have a before photo handy to show. Maybe it's in one of your books. I do. Yeah, I have. And if you go on my website or on my Instagram, you'll see this one's kind of a small one. I don't know. Can you see it? Wow. You look kind of matronly. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, sure. yeah. It, I, I look completely different and I feel better and younger than I did in my 20s. So I am so happy about that. Right. So this this um, this, this question might have come in before you started talking about it, but I just want to. Be Becky said, does she eat nuts? My guess is not very many and not very often. <laughs> not exactly. Not very many and not very often. If I have like I had nuts once while I was in Mexico on my pad thai. So that's what we're talking about. Like I may have like a light sprinkle of something. I don't even think every month. If, I, if I'm gonna eat anything that's overt fat, I choose avocado because I love it. And it's 750 calories per pound, not what 3000 or 3500 calories per pound. Right. So it's like, it's like a quarter of the caloric density. Right, so. Yeah. Do you work with people individually ever or groups? Um, no, I don't. I am extremely busy with, you know, managing all of my social media. YouTube is very laborious and time consuming for me. Plus I'm, you know, a mom and have my children's needs to attend to and soccer practice and 
all of that good stuff. What's your exercise routine like if you have one? And did you exercise when you were losing weight? Yeah, so I get asked this a lot. So during weight loss, I was so burnt out. I did not want to exercise anymore, like go to the gym, hardcore, nothing. And I remember listening to Dr. McDougall and Dr. Barnard talk about how good just walking is. Just go for a brisk walk for 30 to 40 minutes every day. So I took that advice and I did every single day. I went for a brisk 30 to 40 minute walk. We have a lot of like hills here too. So I would just take my dog and walk. That's all I did. But now I I feel so good and I have so much energy. I am very active. I do body weight work. I'm currently um, starting the process of trying to like put on more muscle. And just like, as I'm getting older, you know, 40 is a lot closer now. And I just want to, build more muscle and, you know, keep my body as youthful and fit as long as I can. That is great. When you first read the starch solution, I know you were skeptical at first about eating potatoes, but how did you feel about somebody saying not to eat oil? Because you were eating from what I remember a lot of oil before thinking it was healthy. Yeah. I had subscribed to the whole like paleo idea out there that you need all this fat to balance your hormones. And I was having hormonal issues. So I just kept eating fat, I was actually swallowing like tablespoons of coconut oil a day, Chef AJ. Like I could not believe I was doing that because people were saying that that would help balance your hormones and it did the opposite. So I didn't disagree with cutting out oil at all. I mean, Dr. McDougall's book is, I love that book for beginners because it, it is so easy to read and concise and gives you the research and the information in such a digestible way, but I was convinced. And after listening to hours of lecture by Dr. Neil Barnard and blood sugar, cause I'd been having all these blood sugar issues and was pre-diabetic and his whole thing on, you know, really reducing, if not cutting out completely oil consumption and, and reducing fat so that you can have normal blood glucose numbers I was convinced. So it was a lot harder to get around the idea of carbohydrates. But again, in time, the more I educated myself, the easier it was for me to make that change. Lori wants to know how long it took you to lose the weight. So I would say it took about 14 months before I was weight stable. And I think it would have gone faster had I not had the transition period that I had. But again, like I said, we were just trying to get off of Cheetos and Taco Bell runs. So we went through a definite, like we ate a lot of refined foods, you know, just lots of white bread and, um, (laughs) cereals, you know, all vegan. And we tried to keep things as low fat as possible, but I think it would have gone faster had I gone straight to a whole food plant-based diet. But I think there would have been mutiny in my house. So I had to manage that. So I just transitioned us slowly in. Nice. Did any of your other family or extended family or friends after seeing your success transition to this way of eating? You know, it took them, I think the first year, everybody was like, no, like this is ridiculous. Like you're just on another diet. And I hadn't seen a lot of my family in like six months. So I'd already lost about 40 pounds. And then everybody was like, whoa, okay what are you doing again? What is that book? So yeah. So a lot of people have come over to the plant side now, which is fun. That's fantastic. So I don't know if this is relevant right now being still somewhat in a pandemic, but the question is, is how do you navigate restaurants? So yeah, that one, we really don't go because I live outside of town. So when we go, let's think pre pandemic. So when we go to restaurants, we always choose usually like Asian or Mexican because they're just the easiest to eat at. We love, um, ordering vegetable sushi and just ordering a big pile of steamed vegetables and rice. And then we'll try a bunch of their sauces. Um, And I always do my research beforehand too. Like if we would go out with friends, I would take a look at the menu beforehand and see if there's anything that I felt comfortable ordering. 
And if there wasn't, then I would just load up and eat before I went. And then I'd go and sit and order a lemonade or, and usually like a, like a basket of bread or something, you know, I don't have a problem with eating some bread that way I can join in. But nowadays I'm a little more lenient with if something has oil, but again, I don't go out often. And again, that can be a slippery slope. So if you're eating out often, just pay attention to whether or not you're telling yourself, well, you know, I don't eat out often, but you really are because then it adds up. <laughs> yep. Elizabeth says, do you take any supplements? I do. I take, and this one, this is, <laughs> this is one. And I know cause Dr. McDougall is, um, you know, not for supplements. Um, but I did end up having some deficiencies. So I do take a multivitamin. Um, it's by complement. And it's, it's very little amounts. It's not like these huge mega doses in traditional multis. It just gives you like the basic things that are kind of difficult to get, which are like zinc, selenium, iodine. I had gotten tested and I was very low in zinc, selenium, and iodine. So it ended up being a really good thing for me. Very cool. Uh, Susan says, what did you do when your kids didn't or don't want to eat healthy food? Um, I just ignore it. Like, to be honest, I'm kind of, I run a tight ship and I always think, um, <laughs> I, I can thank my mom for this. My mom always told me, you know, it's good for you to not get everything you want all the time and to feel a little uncomfortable. It forces you to grow. So <laughs> I just take that attitude and that approach with my kids. I'm responsible for their health and their well being, And they don't have to like everything I give them, but they do need to be polite and I don't force them to eat. If they want to eat great. If they don't great, but if they don't eat, there's no snacking later. So that's my rule. So if, if they eat, then they can have a snack later. I don't care. But if they don't eat the main meal, then there's no snacking later. And so we went through a lot of that in the beginning my, my son is very easy. He will eat anything. My daughter is picky for sport. So and she's going on nine and we still, <laughs> it's like a nightly thing with her. So, you know, my advice to parents with picky children or kids that are just, you know, not wanting to fall in line, it's just to hold your own, empathize with their feelings, give them choices, but hold the line. And eventually they'll fall in line. And, and the thing about kids is you want to give them choices. These are your choices. Serve yourself. Choose what you want, what you don't want. That way they feel like they have the autonomy to choose. But from the choices that you're giving them. So just don't be afraid of the whining and the tantrums. My kids did it too. And you just got to be tougher. Good for you. I love mama bear speaking like that. So many <laughs> give their kids what they want and they're not really serving them long term when they do that and get them yeah. sugar and overweight they you know might be in the moment they might be making them happy but trust right. them, not when they grow up and, yeah and that's what you want to keep at the forefront of your mind is that look they may be upset right now and hating everything and complaining everything but about everything but in the end you are responsible for their well-being and you want to give them healthy habits to take with them in the future I, my mom gave us choice, take it or leave it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Faith says, how do you handle the constant shopping for fruits and vegetables? She finds she's constantly at the store. Yeah. So I felt like I had a handle on it, but then like my son turned into a teenager and he eats, I swear more than my husband and I combined. So now I'm, I feel your pain. So I, on the weekend will go get a ton of fresh fruit, fruit and vegetables. And then it's gone by like Tuesday. So then I try to have a bunch of frozen fruits and vegetables to make up for the few days during the week that I don't want to go. And then I'll usually have to hit the grocery store again on Thursday, but that's how I try to manage it. I try to like at the front end of the week, eat all of our fresh stuff. And then at the back end of the week, we'll eat, you know, steamed frozen vegetables and have frozen fruit for dessert. And then we'll keep things that don't go bad quickly, like apples and oranges. 
you know, so it gets a little bland at the end of the week, but I just, yeah, the struggle of going to the grocery store constantly is, is real. Yep. Uh, Allison says, how do you recommend getting unstuck in weight loss? She's been whole food plant-based since July. Yeah. So that's a really, um, that can be a really individual issue. It really depends on how much weight you still have to lose. If you're already in a healthy weight range, but you would just like to be a little thinner, it can just take longer. I would really, what I always tell people is to really look at your diet, maybe write everything you eat down for several days and notice when you're getting into the crackers in the cabinet, you know, you may think, well, I only had a few crackers, but you actually ended up getting in there five times, you know, and how many desserts are you having? Is there oil sneaking in? You know, how many times are you going out? Is it more than you think it is? I always have people reevaluate what they're actually taking in first. And then if that looks really good, then start playing with your calorie dense density knowledge, maybe load up more on vegetables, start like, um, Jeff Novick says, start your meal with a nice vegetable soup or salad, and then move to your 50, 50 plate where you eat your veggies first and then your starch. And then if you're hungry again, you start the process over. So you'll find that when you go back for seconds, you're not going to even get to your second helping of vegetables. And then you're not going to get to the more calorie dense foods first. But I always encourage people that if you're already in a healthy weight range, you're just wanting to get, you know, five more pounds off. Don't drive yourself nuts over it. It really isn't worth it <laughs> in my opinion. So. Absolutely. Uh, Allison says, do you use almond milk or soy milk? So I use both. I use soy milk. I love the organic West soy brand of soy milk. That's what I can get here because it's just soybeans in it. They don't have anything else in it and it's creamier. So for soups that I want to thicken or curries, I will use that. And then, um, for anything else I'll use, like, what do I use almond milk for? I think I only use almond milk for like cereal for my kids. If they ever, like I'll make them some oat cereal because otherwise they won't eat oatmeal. <laughs> so I trick them. <laughs> but other than that, I mostly use soy milk because it's thicker and creamier. Yeah. Uh, Lisa says, what is your go-to dessert? I'm gonna guess it's fruit. It is, it is my go-to. Like I have, I don't know if you can see all of my fruit back here, but I am a fruit bat, like papaya, when that is in season, like I love papaya. I love frozen fruit with sprinkles. Um, occasionally I'll make like the chocolate lava cake. You can get that recipe for free on my website, but really it's fruit. Yep. You, that you, you practice what you preach. Yeah. <laughs> Martha says, did you ever have your old cravings creeping up on you? Oh yeah. I, I went through a lot of, it, it's weird how emotionally attached you are to food and you don't even know it until you start changing your diet. So I definitely went through a lot of that and I had to work through it. And then I just remember Dr. McDougal talking about it and saying that you know, when you have these cravings and you're having these emotional responses and you're feeling like, you know, well, oh, I don't get to eat like everybody else. And, you know, I'm missing out and you're feeling sorry for yourself to remember why you're doing it. And remember that those foods that you're craving aren't good for you. They don't add to your well being. And so I switched from eating purely for pleasure and we'll always eat for pleasure, right? We love eating that way, but I switched my mentality to really looking at food instead of looking at food as, will this make me fat or thin? I looked at it as, will this benefit my body and make me healthy? So, right. and it stopped, it eventually stopped. <laughs> they go away eventually. That's true. And especially if you don't indulge them, if you indulge them, it's like an itch. once you scratch an itch, you never can stop scratching. Yeah. And especially like in the beginning, like it can be, it's again, that slippery slope. If you keep 
indulging, you just really make it harder for yourself. I agree. Do you have any favorite kitchen tools? Do you use either an instant pot or an air fryer? Um, I love, okay. So my favorite splurge ever was my Breville smart oven slash air fryer. I, I use that thing more than I use my oven now. I love that. Cool. Do you like doing YouTube? Um, I do. Um, I, it, it, it takes a lot of time and energy. That's the only part that I don't enjoy, but otherwise I do. I love the platform that it gives you to be able to reach a lot of people. That's good. Were you doing anything like it before? What, what made you decide to start your channel? Everybody around me was sick of listening to me talk about this plant-based lifestyle. Like nobody wanted to hear me talk about it anymore. And my life was just changing so much. Like I finally had my health back. I was so excited about it. My husband had lost weight and was feeling better than he ever had. And this was a man who did not want to give up meat. And he was like, I will give you three months, but then then I'm done. But at the end of those three months, he was 45 pounds lighter and feeling so good. So I had all of this. I, I wanted to share. I felt like people needed to have this information to know that they have the power to actually change their life. So I just decided, I'm like, well, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, which was not like the best idea. I hadn't been on a PC in at least 10 years. Like I had, I have, I still struggle with technology, but yeah, I just wanted to help a hundred people. My goal was to help a hundred people. And if I could do that, then yeah, I'd be done at the end of the year, but it just, the response was phenomenal. And I, I feel so grateful for everybody. And I just feel what makes me the happiest is to hear from everybody that they're getting it and they're feeling better and changing their own lives. Well, I think you've probably helped a lot more than a hundred people just judging by yeah. uh, uh, Tiffany says Kiki is so inspiring. I love her YouTube. Lori says she's such a great mom and thank see, you. wonderful comments. Hold on. I just keep going through them. Uh, I made uh, Mary says I made her sage gravy and I love it. There's oh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of things. Uh, uh, Anissa says her cheese sauce is awesome. Okay. I saw a question about of the plate being, if it should be ever, hold on, where to go? Somebody's saying, should they move it to three, four, one, four? It's just, there's so many comments. I apologize. I, it was somebody saying, hold on, I've got to find this. It, it's kind of important. Let's see. In the meantime, um, okay, I'll, I'll ask this other question while I'm looking for the other one. The question from Faith is, were you ever addicted to coffee? And if so, how did you kick it? So, um, no coffee. I've never been a coffee drinker, so I don't know what it's like to try to get off of that. So I've always just been a tea drinker. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I imagine from what I have experienced with other friends and family that it is, it is tough to cut back. Uh, here get off. So Denise says, does Kiki recommend the three fourth veggie plate and one fourth plate when you only have 10 to 15 pounds left? I'm also hypothyroid and perimenopause. The struggle is real. I worry about people going too low in starch. I do, I do too. And even Dr. McDougall says, you know, he has it in his book, but he's like, you know, be cautious with it because you don't want to take away from the fulfillment and joy and enjoyment that we get as humans from eating. So my suggestion would be first to start with a soup or a salad, start there, then have your 50, 50 plate and go from there. Cause I think psychologically too, cutting down so much and only seeing your little bit of starch would be, I think where I would get tripped up the most, I would start with super salad first, then your 50, 50 plate and see how that goes. That's what I do. I always just, it's just, I mean, it's been 10 years now. I just, whatever I eat vegetables first, I think of vegetables sort of like the Marines. In other words, when, when there's a war, Marines are like the first to fight. They're always called in first <laughs> for the army and the air force and the Navy. And I just, I just, it's just become such a habit that whatever meal I eat or snack, it, it doesn't matter, but veg veggies first. Yep. Veggies first. Absolutely. Tracy says, did Kiki have a regular job before she became a YouTube star? 
So I was um, a Spanish teacher, but after I had my first child, I was fortunate enough to stay home. And so I have been a stay at home mom for the last 10 years. Cool. All right. Let's see. Uh, Michelle says, Kiki, I love your videos. They've kept me going and motivated and happy in my journey to weight loss and feeling good with my body. Thank you. Let's see. I'm so looking sweet. at the questions. All right. Uh, uh, do, do you drink green juice? I actually do, uh, only because I can't be eaten on the show, my vegetables. So yeah. the one from Trader Joe's, it's like 30 calories and it's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. So I love green juice. Um, in the beginning, if you're wondering, like, did I do it during weight loss? No, during weight loss, I was very meticulous about following Dr. McDougall's recommendations um, for weight loss. And I did stay away from green juices. However, I've seen a lot of people be successful incorporating some green juice. I know some people just can't stomach veggies for breakfast. So yeah, but I love, I love a good green juice for sure. Cool. Um, it, 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 by the way, I should have asked you before if there's anything you didn't want me to ask, but if there's something you don't want to ask, if it's too personal, please don't feel like you have to. Uh, sure. Tammy says, do, do you drink any alcohol? Um, I don't, that's another one. Like, I feel like I got that out in college, you know, and I just don't, I don't think, I think the last time I had a drink was I had one glass of wine six months ago, but I honestly don't drink because it, I don't feel good. I feel like my joints ache or something's just not good. And I listen to a lot of, um, podcasts on the exam room with Dr. Neil Barnard. And he talks about how it can really negatively affect estrogen. And because I had been having hormonal issues before I got to a plant-based diet, I just don't want to do anything to, you know, affect that in a negative way. Well, also if, if you understand calorie density, it's almost right. as calorically dense as oil. It's really, yeah. And I'd rather yeah. Chew my yeah. 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 So that too, not, that was standing. Mm -hmm. Aside from the fact that the World Health Organization says they no longer recommend any amount of alcohol is safe and it's linked to every cancer, if you're trying to right. lose weight, it's, it's almost as bad as drinking pure oil. Right. And so like when I go out with friends or whatever and they would order drinks, I would just order, you know, the mocktail version <laughs> of that. Um, they're asking, people are asking what your husband does if you don't want to answer if it's too personal. Um, so my husband actually um, recently just retired from being an engineer. Thank you to everybody's support. We were able to um, just start doing plentiful Kiki stuff full time. So we're he's transitioning out of being an engineer cool. into full time support for me. That's great. I just yeah. saw, uh, okay, here's a question from April. Any advice or focus and for fo any advice for focus and motivation when you're the only one in your home trying to eat whole food plant-based? I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be really difficult. Um, so I would say the best thing you can do is write out your goals and why you're doing this and keep that in front of you go over it every morning and every night and support yourself through online, you know, follow people that inspire you to eat this way, watch their videos, keep reading the books, keep re-listening to lectures because that's going to continue to encourage you while equipping you over and over with the knowledge that you need to be successful. And, you know, unfortunately we can't control other people, but hopefully they'll see the change it makes in your life. And then, you know, they'll want to try it too. Cool. So, so what's uh, what, what big plans do you have for the future? Big plans. Well, I'm just trying to get this plentiful kids <laughs> book out. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm enjoying myself right now. I'm enjoying um, that my husband is home and can be around with me. So I think for the future, just I just want to continue to help and inspire people to love themselves and, you know, realize that they have the power to change their health. 
I love your message and I love your channel. I love you. I love you. And here's a fun question. I don't know if it's fun, but it's a good question, <laughs> Diana. I, should, I don't know why I said that, but I, I hear that a lot. I don't have kids, so I can't answer. How do you navigate your kids with outside family members encouraging other food at gatherings? I don't know if that happens to you. Yeah, yeah, it did happen um, in the beginning. And you really, I just had to be respectfully stern and, you know, respect. And how do I say this? Yeah. I, I had to be stern and I had to tell them like, look, I love that you want to feed my children and give them attention and spoil them with treats, but we don't eat this way. And, and I would give them options if they Oh, you seem to have frozen. Hello. You, is she frozen for you or just me? Boy. To my kids. Um, but otherwise, you just have to communicate what you're doing and why. And boundaries with family can be hard. But in the end, you're responsible for them. They're your kids. So sometimes you just got to have a hard conversation. And I did. I had those hard conversations. So Arena says, what do your children do and what do they eat if they go to birthday parties? Okay. So we're very fortunate um, because our kids' friends know that they're vegan um, and they, they go out of their way to make vegan things or buy vegan food. So it's not always oil free and it's not as healthy as I would obviously like it to be, but it's a birthday party. So whatever. Um, I also will always communicate with the parents beforehand. I'll say, you know, my children are vegan. Um, I am so happy to bring dessert for them and to share for everybody else. So I just always offer to bring vegan cupcakes for not only my children, but to share with everybody else. And, um, that always seems to go over well. That's terrific. Uh, uh, Victoria must have missed what you said, what you did for exercise, but she says, I'm in my first 30 days on this starch solution journey. Your videos have anchored me. I want to ask how often I should be working out and what workouts have you implemented? But it sounds like walking is your thing. Walking. I loved walking. I would say go for a good, strong, get your heart pumping walk for 30 to 40 minutes every day. If you want to do more than that, then you could definitely start doing some body work. Um, I, or weightlifting. I love to do weightlifting or do lunges outside. You know, if you don't mind anybody else watching you, I never minded. So <laughs> <laughs> Samuel says, what size Mason jars do you use for individual servings for oats or puddings? For oats or puddings, you know, we have such a hodgepodge I want to say they're 12 ounce. I want to say they're 12 ounce, but my kids can only eat. Well, my son can eat the whole thing. My daughter will only eat like six ounces of that. That's a, but your kids are okay with being vegan. They're enjoying it now. The they, they do. They love it. We, um, and my daughter was young when we started, but we still had them watch what the health and they watched Forks Over Knives and they listened. When we took road trips, we put on all the TED Talks by Dr. Neil Barnard and they weren't actively listening, but they were still getting bits and pieces of it. And we just continued to talk about how important it is to love our bodies with healthful food um, and how it reduces our impact on the environment. And, you know, it allows us to love more fully animals. So we've just kind of nurtured it for them and they are just hardcore, strong vegans. <laughs> Great. Uh, Diana says, do you, is there a dairy-free yogurt that your kids like? Yeah. So I don't buy it often, but once in a while we'll do um, like fruit parfaits, which they love. And we get the, I think it's so delicious. And I'll get the plain unsweetened yogurt and then I'll blend up strawberries and put some strawberries in there and sweeten it myself with a little stevia or maple syrup because I don't like them getting the huge amount of sugar that the sweetened ones come in. But the so delicious coconut yogurt is our favorite and it's 
I, I think one of the lowest in fat as well. That's cool. Let's see. Uh, Esther, and actually somebody else asked this, do you consider yourself an ethical vegan as well? Um, I, I no. I think that that is something that is earned over a, a lifetime. And I, I don't, you know, I don't consume animal products and I'm, I'm definitely all for animals and but the, the thing that I run into is that we still have all of our, you know, down jackets. We live in Colorado and we try to source as much of it used as possible. So we're not adding to the impact and not adding to the industry. Um, so I don't know if that really answers that. Like I, I definitely, it's important to me and all that, but I still have like my old shoes that have leather on them and things like that. And I don't want to be wasteful and throw them away. But if there's things that we have to buy and my growing kids need, you know, down jackets are just a necessity when it gets 10 below zero. And, but we try to source everything as much as we can used. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Samuel says, do you stop eating at a certain time? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am a night snacker. Like it is an issue. So I just like to snack when I watch TV and it's a bad habit. I know, but no, I don't stop eating at a certain time. A lot of times I'm like eating a snack and then getting, going to bed. Great. So, yeah. Dina says, how much fruit do you eat in a day? And do you eat tofu? Um, fruit. I eat a lot of fruit. I'll, especially as it gets warmer. I like fruit for breakfast sometimes and I get lazy about the starch. So I just throw like more bananas in. Um, I probably eat four to six servings of fruit a day. Um, and I don't eat tofu for no other reason other than I just don't enjoy it. Like my kids love tofu. I make it for them. I don't like tofu. I just struggle with it. Good. Uh, Claire says, do you do yoga? Um, I, try to do yoga. I would like to do better. Um, I do have a hard time like taking the time to do yoga. So, but I would like, I would like to do more yoga. Uh, the, um, Missy says, do you sprout? I just started sprouting since my birthday last week. Cause I got a sprout. No, I don't. And I have been looking at kits. So you guys let me know like how to start because these little boxes of sprouts are so expensive. They're like $5. And I just feel ridiculous. Like it's so wrong. Let me tell you, it's so easy. I mean, I have no green thumb. I've never even been able to keep a plant alive, but it's just so easy. You put a couple tablespoons in the jar and you add the water and you rinse it twice a day. And three days later, I got so many sprouts now. I don't know what to do with them. Okay. I'm I, cause I have been wanting to do this. So no, I hope to be a sprouter soon. Very cool. Wait, I think I saw something here. Oh, how, uh, Diana, how long did it take you to get your husband on board? Um, so he got on board quickly because he had seen through the years how hard I had tried to get my health under control and get my weight under control. And now with all of you know, the issues that my doctor was seeing with my health. Um, he's, he's so wonderful. He, he read the book, he watched the documentaries with me. That was his way of supporting me. And then he committed to three months to support me three to four months. I don't remember what he committed to. It doesn't matter now because he never went back, but, um, yeah, he was very supportive from the beginning. Um, of course he was like, no, like we can't give up bacon and eggs. Um, but once he watched the documentaries and read the book and got the information in himself, it was that along with his act of love and support for me was to do it with me for three months. But then he ended up turning into a sexy beast himself <laughs> and never wanting to go back. <laughs> That is fantastic. Yeah. So how about maybe one, one more question. Um, everybody always wants to know this. What is Kiki's favorite meal? My favorite meal is vegan pizza. I just love, love vegan pizza. Do you make one or, or, or do you go out for it? 
I, I do make one, but let's be honest, like the restaurant ones are always way better. <laughs> wow. Well, you're, you're great. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank to you. A whole new generation of young people to, to look and feel their best, just like you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, you're, you're just really a joy and I, I appreciate your work so much. And I'm so glad that you like the vinegars because knowing that you like things that are easy now, it's, I mean, you've got like sauces all the time. All the time in dressings. Like I'm not going to make anything anymore. This, I mean, really you changed my life with all of those that you sent me. I got online like the next night and I ordered, my husband was like, he saw the size of the box that came. He was like, woman, you have lost it. No, you're, you're great. And you're really making it easy for people to understand calories. Thank you so much. I love what you do. And thanks Thank all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you like today's demo, come back tomorrow. We have two. We have a bonus show at 2 p.m. with Dr. Not Dr. Dr. Joel Furman's daughter, Talia Furman, who's got a new book coming out. It's a dessert book called Desserts to Live For. She's not using any sugar. And then Angie James will also be doing the cooking demo at 11. Thanks again, Kiki. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.